Let's unravel the mysteries of the spinal cord, a vital conduit of communication in our body's nervous system. Picture this, a long, tubular bundle of nerves that journeys from the base of the brain down the spine. This is the spinal cord, a linchpin of our central nervous system. But it's not a solo act. The spinal cord is safeguarded by the sturdy vertebrae, the bony backbone of our body. Think of it as nature's armor, shielding this crucial neural highway. Enveloping the spinal cord is the spinal canal, a protective channel formed by openings in the vertebrae. But that's not all. Cerebrospinal fluid, a liquid buffer, circulates around the spinal cord, adding an extra layer of defense. Now, where does this spectacle unfold? Picture the spinal cord nestled within the spinal canal, gracefully descending from the brain through the upper reaches of the vertebral column. In adults, it usually wraps up its journey around the first or second lumbar vertebra, though, like any great story, there can be some variation. Let's have a look at its structure. At the center of the spinal cord, we find gray matter. It appears gray due to the abundance of nerve cell bodies and dendrites responsible for processing information. Surrounding the gray matter is the white matter, giving the spinal cord its whitish color. It's made up of myelinated nerve fibers forming tracts, facilitating communication between the brain and peripheral nerves. The dorsal horns, extending towards the back, house sensory nerve fibers carrying signals from peripheral nerves. On the other side, the ventral horns, projecting forward, contain motor nerve fibers responsible for transmitting signals to muscles and glands. Between the dorsal and ventral horns lies the intermediate zone. This area is involved in autonomic functions and the coordination of reflexes. The white matter includes ascending tracts carrying sensory information to the brain and descending tracts transmitting motor signals from the brain to muscles and glands. Spinal nerves emerge from the spinal cord, carrying both sensory and motor fibers. Dorsal roots contain sensory fibers, while ventral roots contain motor fibers. The main functions of the spinal cord include The spinal cord serves as a pathway for nerve signals traveling between the brain and the peripheral nervous system, which includes the nerves that control muscles and relay sensory information. Think of it as a high-speed information highway, transmitting signals that govern our movements and sensations. The spinal cord is also a maestro of reflexes. Ever touch something hot and immediately jerk your hand away? That's the spinal cord at work, orchestrating rapid, involuntary responses without waiting for the brain's input. Let's talk about sensations. The spinal cord is the conduit for sensory information, relaying data from your skin, muscles, and joints to the brain. On the flip side, it's the gateway for motor commands, executing the brain's orders to move muscles and carry out actions. Digging a bit deeper, the spinal cord plays a role in autonomic functions, those automatic processes like heartbeat and digestion. It's the silent conductor ensuring the rhythm of life keeps playing. In summary, the spinal cord is not just a bundle of nerves. It's a maestro, a messenger, and a guardian of our body's intricate symphony. It's the unsung hero behind every step, every sensation, and every reflex. To learn more about the anatomy of neurons, click the left video. To find out how action potentials work, watch the right video. I'll see you there.